now after roughing in my gains outside today, I'm, I'm going to go, I've connected the Hoverfly Pro back up, and I'm going to go to my auto leveling on the Hoverfly setup utility, and I'm going to, I've got it at 56%, and I'm on a, the slightly on the aggressive side, so I'm going to turn it back to smooth, try and see if I can get it to smooth out a little bit better. And I'm going to click, uh, click save. Click OK. So it's going to save that and I'm going to take it outside after I charge the batteries up and then we'll see if it um, flies any smoother. So that's all. I decided to move the um, on my hoverfly setup utility I decided to move the auto leveling up to 38 percent because when I had it on the lowest setting it was making it so um, it was flying too stiff and um, it really didn't have that fluid motion allowing the acceler accelerometers and the um, uh, gyros to kick in and, and lift it back up I was having to tilt it and fly it on the sticks kind of like a helicopter so if that would be okay if I was flying in close proximity but if I take it far out in the distance and it, and I can't see the orientation super well it might cause a crash so I did bump that thing back up and uh, I'll probably take it outside and fly it I think that's going to be about the best spot to keep it now these are the new ESCs that I put on here and replacing the older ones that are right here um, from the original maiden flight and you, here's the burned up one so you guys can see how bad it melted down in that maiden flight when it uh, cooked itself and it even left a burn mark on the uh, on the back boom the one that it that it took out so but anyway this is how the um, the ESCs look on the copter I took a little piece of aluminum and cut it and then I put some plastic screws to hold the um, the Castle Creation Phoenix Edge down on here and um, then I put some Velcro on the bottom of the aluminum so that worked out nicely they flex and then the pr prop blows air down on them pretty nicely so it keeps them cool but I don't have to worry about cool right now because it's only like 15 degrees out every day that I've been test flying this so far and um, but anyway these are 100 amp 
And there's something really unique about these. They have like a little light that lights up on the side. And when I have the propellers off and I'm testing it in the house and I move my throttle up with my DX8, I can see if I'm getting too much amperage because the light is yellow on the side of this and it turns red when I get to the top end of the throttle on the DX8. Now I have my throttle set at 89% instead of 100%. Hoverfly likes when you set it up at 100% but if I set this at 100% and throttle it up it turns the red light on on the ESC and they have a certain cut level high or low. If it goes over a certain level when it's high it'll um, shut the ESC off so I had to go into my my DX8 and I had to adjust this with a throttle curve to make sure it doesn't um, uh, cause the ESC to go into a shutdown mode. The other thing is with uh, the old um, when I adjusted the throttle curve before I had it set at 90% on, on the older ESCs that are right here um, and, and when I did that I curved my throttle right in the, the top quarter and I made it it's kind of angled in and when I did that it caused the copter to start bobbing up and down so when I left this time I left it straight up on the curve and then chopped it right there at 89 percent and that's giving me now with it being straight it's giving me full power to that point now on today's flight the best gain setting I have uh, for the auto leveling feature is 25 percent on the DX8 where you guys saw me adjusting it outside that's the the best I came up with it's but this kind of thing is always subject to change I don't know um, how it's going to uh, play out when I start working on setting up the um, altitude hold and that most likely will be in the next video I'll stand back a little bit here so you guys can see uh, roughly about the size of it now I've got the Iconic X frame sitting on the side of the Giant Hex and the Iconic X is 500 millimeter which is a pretty good size copter uh, the Giant Hex is 1295 millimeters or 51 inches from boom end to boom end. Uh, the propellers are 15 inch by 8 pitch, 8% 8 pitch. Um, the, it, this whole thing is sitting on the beer keg, which is a quarter barrel beer keg. I, I built the, the giant hex for to, to try and lift this thing up for the Hobby King beer lifting contest, but I'm not sure if I'm ever going to get to it. Um, it's, uh, I don't have any Hobby King batteries right now and I, I've still got to pick those up and it probably won't be till summer. I, I'm, I'm going to try and do a practice lift on it with the batteries I already have here to see if it will be able to lift it. And, uh, but as far as that goes, I'm not really sure how that whole thing will wind up. But anyway, I'm just about out of time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode on the new ESCs and setting up the gains on the Giant Hexcopter.